Hello all sentient beings and welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode where we talk about all news, comics, and media related to the... On this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode, we review Transformers Escape Issue 3, we think. We have some more actor news as it relates to the next Transformers live action movie and Transformers Rescue Bots gets nominated for an Academy. Today is Friday, May 21st, 2021, and this is episode 234 of Transmissions Alt Mode. Welcome to Transmissions Alt Mode, the podcast that's pretty sure the third time's the charm. Come on, IDW, don't make us look like idiots again. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. The amazing and awesome producer and editor, Mike. I was going to make a joke about being the third person intro, but there's no Jeremy today, so it's Mel messed up. (laughs) And Daryl, the Cybertronian beast. Ha ha, I'm the third person intro So then, there we are. (laughs) Let's talk Transformers. All right. Uh, as always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. Thank you so much for continuing to support the show and helping to keep us going. And this week we welcome a new Donatrion, Goji Prime. Thank you, Goji Prime, for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. You're awesome. And uh, go back to the Toy Show, episode 434, if you want to hear Rush and Yoshi, Yoshi's personal message to you. No, no, don't. You don't. <laughs> You don't need to do that. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. And uh, you've got one of the perks of being a Donatrion is that you've got access to all of the uncut Empire of Rust episodes. And episode 50 was out this week. But for all of our regular Empire of Rust listeners, episode 50 for you is coming this Monday. So this Monday, May 24th, episode 50 is high or low. Good for you. And longtime listeners of Empire of Rust will get the joke. So this is our live play RPG Transformers RPG podcast, the one and only live play RPG Transformers RPG podcast. So that's right, Charles, the one and only (laughs) 50 episodes. Can you guys believe it? That's a lot. 50 episodes of Empire of Rust. And Daryl hasn't listened to a single one yet. (laughs) Nope. That is true. I'm, wait, I'm waiting for the uh, waiting for the the, the compressed uh, version, the TLDR version. <laughs> waiting for the hard the hardcover version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're in talks with Barnes and Noble right now. Don't worry, Daryl. We'll get you. Okay, good. Six seasons and a movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Empire of Rust, and the we're approaching the end of season one of Empire of Rust, uh, so continue to listen to hear the conclusion of the Cybertron First Saga, which is, is rushing towards a, a big finale very soon in another few episodes. Absolutely, but don't worry, we're not stopping the show. We're going right into season two. And yeah, there'll be a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of new things and some cool stuff happening. So, perfect time if, for example, you're like someone who hasn't listened to anything to jump on. You know, <laughs> Daryl. <laughs> huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? We're just like comic uh, comic book uh, publishers. You know, we gotta make the jumping on points, right? Yep. <laughs> Got to get those new readers, those elusive new readers. <laughs> We've been getting some new... I, I, th- Speaking of... Con- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, excellent segue, Mike. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's jump right into comics news. All right, uh, just one item in comics news. We've got a, the retailer incentive cover... For issue four of Transformers Beast Wars, IDW's Transformers Beast Wars reboot series. Uh, So uh, I think issue four should be out very soon uh, in the next few weeks. This retail incentive cover is by longtime Transformers fan artist Dan Kana, 
who uh, he's, uh, you know, been in the fandom for a long time and has done lots of professional work these days. But yeah, it's cool to see uh, his artwork on the Beast Wars cover here. And this one is uh, got Dinobot right in the center there. Dinobot squaring off with the Maximals all, uh, you know, he's he's carrying the, uh, you know, he, he rescued Nyx from the Predacons, betrayed the Predacons, and now he is... Uh, about to join the Maximals, maybe, but they don't trust him because he is a Predacon, so you guys know Beast Wars. <laughs> so check Yeah, we do. Check that out. No, I don't. <laughs> All right, and uh we'll get issue four of Beast Wars coming very soon, but that's it's that's the cover for coming up, the retail incentive cover coming up. All right, so we will jump right into our comic review. So if there are no further uh, snafus or problems, this is where we will do a review of Transformers Escape, issue number three. Uh, This book has been delayed multiple times, but we are hopeful that the book will come out this week. And we will be able to insert the review that we've already recorded right here into our podcast. So everyone can finally listen to our thoughts on Transformers Escape number three. Uh, This review uh, was recorded over a month ago. uh, And we know it's a month ago because Mike was on the review. (laughs) And he's here. He's here every month. (laughs) Perfect timing. (laughs) Sit back and enjoy our review of Transformers Escape number three. This week we are looking at Transformers Escape number three. This is written by Brian Ruckley, art by Beth McGuire Smith, colors by Priscilla Tramontano, letters by Jake M. Wood, editor is David Marriott, assistant editor is Riley Farmer, and supervising editor is Tom Waltz. There are three covers. Uh, The first one, as a wheeljack and hound trying to protect some Aeovians from Insecticons. And this is by Beth McGuire Smith. Cover B has wheeljack and hound. um, It looks like they're being treated to some Aeovian hospitality. And this is by Ume Meow. And the retailer incentive has a, um, uh, the Insecticons uh, done in uh, Native American style. This is by Jeffrey Vreggi. So, uh, Mike, let's start with you. Which one of the three do you like? I think uh, Umi Meows is the one that is calling to me. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. I just like the the overall kind of like very clean, polished kind of look to it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go for. Umi Meows cover. I love the like the detailing on uh, Hound in the upper left over there. Yeah. Uh, I probably could do without the, the round circles in the eyes, but other than, the, other than that, that's the only really distracting part of it. That's kind of been what she's done with all of the Transformers she's done. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Daryl, how about you? You know what's weird? I'm not a huge fan of either one of these covers. Um, um, you know what? I guess, you know, I'm probably going to go with uh, um, Umi Meow's. It just uh that's probably the the got the tightest lines on it i guess jeffrey Briggs cover is really good he, that's what he does is the the minimalist covers um mm-hmm. and they're they're very well done it's just not my style i just don't particularly go for those but they're they're good um and mm-hmm. uh and, and and i'm not a huge fan of 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 Beth McGuire Smith's art. So um, I guess it defaults to Umi Meows this week. Charles, how about you? Uh, I'm going to cast another vote for Umi Meows cover B. Um, uh, yeah. the And I agree with Mike. The, the circles on the eyes is a little, you know, that, that distracts me a little bit. But other than that, I think the, the lines are nice. The colors are nice. Uh, and yeah, I think it's a good cover. Are you going to make it a quartet there, Jeremy? I'm I'm kind of split. Uh, I like Umi Meow's cover. I also like the retailer incentive. I, I am a fan of, of Jeffrey Vrage's art. But I think because the retailer incentive is so hard to get, I, I would 
probably try to get cover B. Clean sweep here for Umi Mio. Very nice. Yeah. All right. Uh, this story uh, is titled The Escape Part 3. The attack on the convoy is continuing and it's not looking good. An Insecticon nears two Aeovians and Tote com- convert, or er, sorry, transforms and oh God. the two Aeovians <laughs> get inside him for a moment of safety. The Insecticon is then shot by Power Flash and High Jump, who just arrived. They disobeyed Howden's order to stay at the front, and he's thankful for the help. With the numbers now too much for the Insecticons, Shrapnel generates a blinding flash of or a blinding flash of lightning, and they make their escape. Elsewhere in a hidden base, Skystalker is lo- loading up a transport ship. Onslaught questions him as he doesn't know anything about this. However, Skystalker is still controlled by Bombshell, and he's just kind of agreeing with whatever Onslaught is saying as he continues to load the plane. When he's done, he shocks Onslaught into unconsciousness and flies the plane away. As the convoy recovers and gets moving again, Hound is talking with Diatlas, who is talking about his experiences and not wanting him to fight. He never wanted to fight, even in the past, but did because beasts like Abominus weren't able to be talked down or the threat was just too big that he thought it threatened everyone. A feeling is fading now, but as he was emergent, he felt like there was a type of unity that he was becoming a part of until he came back. He sees that everyone is part of the whole that he was becoming, and he doesn't want to use violence against anyone, not even his enemies, because it would also be doing the violence against himself. Inside an emergent Titan, Insecticons have arrived and are working on setting up their new home base. Skystalker had already arrived and had, has been setting up the items that he took from the Decepticons. The machinery that they stole will harvest raw materials and they're going to use that to turn it, or, and they're going to turn it into Ultra Energon. In the convoy, Hoist is repairing Leviathan as Wheeljack is watching yet another Titan coming down. He just wants to build and fix, but all there is right now to fix is people. Hoist understands but they're doing what they can right now. And once they get to safety, they can look for a place to build. Just then Leviathan yells for help. Some Aeovian children are climbing on her face and she's afraid to make a sudden move to hurt them. Will Jack tries to communicate with them to get, to get them to get off her face when Nautica notices and tells them to return to their families in their native language. She came to bring gears to Wheeljack, who's excited to see his mentee safe again. Above, they hear Highbrow returning, indicating that they're nearing Dark Mount. As they get closer, Straxus contacts them and tells them not to come any further. He says that Dark Mount isn't prepared to have such a large number of newcomers, or newcomers, so until the arcs are ready, they're going to have to remain outside. He will, however, send supplies and assistance for the injured, but he doesn't want to risk disrupting the progress of the arc project. In shockwave space, Rage is ranting to Soundblaster that he's been called in. Soundblaster orders him to go retrieve the device that the Insecticon stole. Rage grumbles, but shockwave orders him to go and to take Hydradred with him. Hydradred has invented several deadly weapons that he's been wanting to field test, so he's excited to come along. To be continued. So this was, I, I think it was kind of an okay book. It's back to kind of some world building stuff with um, Diatlas and not really a ton of action. It's more kind of putting more pieces in place, but I didn't find it unenjoyable. It just, I think some of the earlier issues of this book were a lot more enjoyable than this. I thought the art was okay. The the coloring kind of was odd in places with the, the dots that they use, um, I don't know. It just, I think it was fine. We, we've seen a little bit better, but I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't anything that I really had a lot of complaints about. I'm interested to see where the Insecticon plot is going to go. It, it seems like there's something there, but we haven't really been clued into a lot of what they're doing. It is kind of a, a beating the head, uh, a dead horse with, you know, all these comics, but I kind of want to get on with, it with the story, but this one, you know, it, it had such a good start, and it seems to have stalled out a little bit. Mike, let's start with you. Um, what were your thoughts on the book? So I really love the inclusion of all of these little side characters. You know, characters like Skystalker, Hydra Head, um, uh, who is it, 
coat, power jump, um, power flash. I mean, like these are some ridiculously deep cuts of characters. So I definitely love the inclusion on that. Uh, the story is a little slow paced, but it's I, I didn't dislike it or anything. So it does feel like you said more like world building and and kind of like story progression, but not really a whole lot of uh, really a whole lot of action, not a whole lot of movement forward. But a lot of the movement did happen in that last issue as well. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, this one here was like a, a little bit of a pullback, a little bit of a slower-paced issue, but, you know, no real big big worries about that. I'm sure it'll pick up again in another issue or so. Uh, I I still love all the interactions with uh, with Titans, especially with uh, Leviathan. The, uh, the, the, the line about, like, I don't want to move. I'm going to hurt them if I move my face. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so overall, you know, pretty good opinions of it, certainly. Uh, maybe pick up the pace a little bit more, but mm, we're good. Daryl, what were your thoughts on the book? Yeah, it's slow. Uh, there's not a heck of a lot happening. Uh, I'm I'm kind of getting sick of uh, of uh, was it Diatlas? <laughs> I mean, I was really excited to see him show up, and then yeah. he he, hasn't he done just anything. just kind of <laughs> is like. Uh, I'm not gonna really do that anymore. I don't. Uh, I don't really do that. God, come on, just fight! Right. It's like, <laughs> why are you here if you're? The hell spend all did of your you wake up for? Yeah. You know why the hell did you wake up if you're just gonna stand around and watch things happen? Oh, I got woken up because the people that I swore to protect, uh, uh, you know, needed, needed me. Protecting. <laughs> and now I'm just going to watch them get fucked over. Well, come on, man. Like, what the hell? What is this book about? Yeah, I'm I'm not I'm not really enjoying the book right now. It's uh it seems to not really be going anywhere. I'm I'm interested in the the fact that this is probably the most interaction with non-humans that transformers have had uh as far as organics mm-hmm. uh yes current r- transformers run has organics on the planet too but they they're integrated with them here like they're in and among in amongst them so you know that's interesting i just i want some shit to happen like it just nothing seems to happen and like i was saying it when we were talking about the covers Beth McGuire Smith's art is just it's not doing it for me uh, on this issue it's it seems really like messy I don't know if that's right the right word it's uh it's it's just not clean I guess there are some just parts in where the 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 colors kind of they extend past the line in which they should stop um and whether that's the colorist's fault or you know instruction from from the artist it just it bothers me that's the if you've got a line on the page that should be the end of it unless it's a you know uh like a um what am i talking about like a uh a detail like a uh in the in the in the body of the figure but yeah i'm uh, i'm just i'm looking at these things and i keep my eye just keeps seeing all these these errors in my own head and I'm not I'm not a huge fan of it. Like when um shoot, Tote transforms, the 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 wheels for Tote are a mess. Like I'm looking at the entire alt mode of Tote and it's just a absolute mess. Should I be upset with that? I don't know. You know, what am I supposed to not care that, you know, his alt mode looks like really messy i don't know it just it it kind of looks like it's been it's what it got to the sketch phase and is was colored after that i feel like i should want more out of these things and i'm and i and i don't i don't get it i don't i feel bad because i'm harping on the art so much and we've been given better and then we get others you know and it's just you know i just i feel bad because i know that Beth is a real person and she probably doesn't listen to this show anymore because we shit on the art so much or I shit on the art so much, but, but I feel bad because I do that. And it's not an indication of her. It's just, I, I, I want better art. 
and art is subjective so it is you know, right where you might have a problem with it someone else is gonna love it let's talk to charles who loves it all right <laughs> yeah charles what are your thoughts <laughs> uh I, save daryl well i don't i don't know if i can daryl because I, I i i wouldn't say that i do love this i mean i i in the past um some of the, of beth mcguire smith i have enjoyed art i have enjoyed but I do uh, kind of agree with you that the art does look very like sketchy, I guess, you know, like, like looks re reminiscent of a sketch. I mean, I think, and it's consistent. Yeah. But I, I think it's consistent in that. I think this is the style that she's going for. So, I mean, it's not a, you know, it's not a indication that like she didn't finish it or anything. It's, but this is the style, like the, the, me it's, I think the, the point is that it's, it's it's supposed to be more uh, I don't know abstract or impressionistic or something like that. Maybe it's supposed to give the the feeling of being rushed, but the plot that was given with the story, nothing is happening, so there's no rushing. <laughs> the art for me is is I, I mean I don't have a huge problem with it, but for it's I still prefer other styles to to this uh, to this style. You know it does it does it's not my favorite style. In terms of the story, yeah, it is. It's moving kind of slow. I mean, the fact, the combination of the story moving slowly with the delays in the books, where it's taking you know six weeks to eight weeks between each chapter, that's making it hard to keep the story, keep following the story. Like I went back and read issue two so that I could understand where we were in issue three because issue three does it starts off like you're right in the thick of things because you're in the middle of a battle. But I didn't remember where 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 that battle had started, so I had to go back and look. That's and this is you know this is my continuing I guess you know my criticism of of Brian Ruckley's uh, writing style is you know he's very much kind of each each chapter of a novel flows you know there's there's not really a a huge break point between in, individual chapters because I think you know his background is a novelist so it's a you know he's he tends to keep the the stories fluid, but in the comics medium, I really would like to have individual issues have a you know an individual structure where you have a you know a beginning, middle, and end, and that you know one leads into the next one. But you still should have like what you know what was the main story in this book as opposed to the previous chapter, and it's kind of hard to to say that. I mean, we have we have a couple of things going on. We have uh. Sky Stalker stealing the ship for the Insecticons. We have the Insecticons attacking the convoy, and then we have the convoy continuing and then getting stalled because uh, um, Straxus won't let them, you know, go into Dark Mount. Uh, and then we have the fourth thing of uh, of Shockwave sending Rage and Hydra Dread to, you know, stop the Insecticons. So it's a, it's a lot of things going on, uh, but I don't see a main through line of the story. That's, you know, that's, it makes things hard to follow. I do appreciate a lot of the side characters, but the thing about throwing in all these side characters is you got to give us a little meat on and on the characterization so that we remember them. Like, uh, you know, it's nice to throw out all these obscure characters, but then do we remember any of them? I mean, I, I think that was kind of the the magic of James Roberts and more than meets the eye is that he took a lot of the, you know, B C D lister characters and then made them special, unique and gave them interesting characterizations. And we're getting a high, you know, a high count of obscure characters, but not a lot of them are getting to shine really. I think James Roberts didn't have as many kind of a listers in the story. So they were the lesser known characters could mm -hmm. take some more of the focus whereas here there's more of that a tier character yeah. Duke wheeljack nautica hound diatlas yeah and and having said that i do i am intrigued by um rage and hydra dread at the end so if the focus shifts to them next issues I'll, i'm curious and then i i did i had to look them up on the tf wiki because i wasn't familiar with them they are generation two stormtroopers so these are the guys that had the w little water cannons and the toys so I, I, which makes sense with the whole acid yeah rifle and stuff exactly so that that was a nice little nod to the toys 
And yeah, and and I'm I'm a little fed up with Die Atlas too. I'm like, I, you know, I, I I'm not I'm not a fan of the kind of radical pacifism trope where it's like, yeah, I'm not I'm I I can't do any violence even if it's if it's in defense of my friends or anything. I mean, I understand not wanting to you know to engage in violence and violence begets violence and all that stuff, but. If you have an existential threat and they're like, if an Insecticon is going to eat your friend, you can't just say, well, I can't do violence. Uh, he's sorry. You're going to get eaten. I mean, that's, <laughs> I don't, I, I don't, I, I can't agree with that philosophy. <laughs> you got to do something. You got to step in. <laughs> that's an argument against the character. If, if you're portraying the character consistently like that, that, you know, that's fine for the story that works in the story, but. I have a problem with that character, with, you know, with that kind of uh, approach to <laughs> to living your life. I mean, yeah, we're all connected in the great circle of life. But, you know, if if they're going to eat you, you got to fight back. <laughs> yeah. Overall, I mean, it, it's the I, I think it, it, it'll definitely read better as a like as a single story when you have all five issues together. But the individual issues, I don't think, are holding up on their own. All right. Well, hopefully. Escape lives up to its name next month and, you know, it picks up with the the Rage and Hydra Dread story. But for now, that is it for issue three. Okay, so uh, we, that was our past review of Transformers Escape issue three. But uh, Dr. Pants was not with us for that episode when we when we actually did the review. So he's here now and we don't want to have him feeling left out. So, uh, Dr. Pants, could you please give us your thoughts on this issue? Uh, First, you can tell us which cover you preferred and then uh, tell us your thoughts on Transformers Escape number three. Well, number one, thank you for involving me in this, even though you already did it. It Makes me feel really special. Thanks, guys. (laughs) Um, so I like all the covers as usual. Um, they're all really cool in their own right. That first cover is really dynamic, really colorful. And, uh, I mean, it's what happens in the book, but if I have to pick one, I'm actually going to go with cover B because it's Ume Meow. And I love that artwork. That style gets me every time. And I absolutely love it. Particularly the eyes. There's something, there's something with the way that Umi does eyes. It's just, it gets me. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I would pick cover B. Um, as far as the issue goes, I really enjoyed it. Uh, we start off with some really, really good action. I love seeing the Insecticons being brutal and just tearing through people. And then a lot of the other dialogue and everything has just been really, really fun. Um, it's weird doing this after you guys have done this. But I think just overall, I love the artwork. Uh, Beth, Beth McGuire Smith does some great stuff. I always enjoyed when she was on the main series. I love seeing her do this. And I just some takeaways. I love when they have tote transform into his vehicle mode to shelter the organics from the insecticons. That was kind of a cool use of the alt mode. Nice to see them use that. As I said, the insecticons are brutal and it's really nice to see them just being kind of these barbaric animals tearing through people and even devouring people. They devoured two of the organics and they ate, one of the one of the Cybertronians, I forget which one though. But it was cool to see the Thunderwing in this, or uh, is it the Thunderwing? No, uh, the Thunder Arrow, that thing, the ship, because it was a MicroMaster base, and it was cool that they brought that in with Sky Stalker, who was with that. That was really cool. I love seeing Diatlas play a pro- prominent role in this series. It's a little weird because of his condition, I guess, but. It's nice that he's giving some background to stuff. We're getting some background to like the War of the Threefold Spark and everything. We get to see that a little bit of a couple of shots with the fight with Abominus. That was really, really cool. I like all the characters in here. I like this ensemble they've got going on and I like this plot and I want to see where more of this goes. The whole thing has been a lot of fun and yeah, I'm loving it. I love having this along with the main series. It's a nice little change of pace and uh yeah, I think the only other thing I wanted to bring up is it was really cool to see Strax- Straxus. And uh, he's overheading the city uh, Darkmount, which yes. 
which I thought was kind of cool because didn't they didn't they call Strax's Dark Mount for a while in Transformers because like they did they lose the license to the name or trademark to the name or well, something? He was he was called the Bard of Dark Mount. Okay, and, His toy and was Dark Mount. Dark Mount. W- Dark Mount was his original Decepticon stronghold in the G1 comics when he was first introduced. Okay. So I, that's what who wrote, who wrote those books. That was Bob Budiansky, Daryl. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I might be thinking then in the trading card game, I think they put out a Straxus card, but they called him Dark Mount. Like I said, his toy was called Dark Mount. Okay. Yeah. I mean, okay. they, they, I think they, they could not get the trademark for Straxus. So that's why they called his toy Dark Mount. But okay. again, Dark Mount was his original G1 stronghold. Okay. So it's always, it, it's always been connected. Yeah. And if, uh, if and, you would like to buy that card, it, it's currently $6.44 <laughs> on TG, TCGplayer.com. <laughs> I, I mean, I've got that card somewhere. So, and, but. Straxus in in this book Strax or in Escape Straxus has been spelled with an extra X so the extra X is for extra escape excitement I don't know <laughs> Also the face is weird cuz it doesn't look like the Straxus I'm used to cuz he's got yeah, a he, mouth he, Yeah this that's maybe that's foreshadowing that he he's not evil yet <laughs> Maybe maybe but again I love it uh, the last thing the last thing I want to talk about are these two characters at the end. It's Rage and Hydra Dread. Love seeing these two characters from like the G2 toy series who were the water, the water figures. That was so cool. And I love that Hydra Dread is like the super ecstatic, like mad inventor who's just like when Rage comes in, he's just super excited. Like, let me show you all the things I've made. And I love characters like that. And I also think it's cool that these two who were like the water gun based figures the weapon that he shows off is an acid jet gun. So it kind of ties back into their toy. And I thought that was just really cool. I love that the, this new IDW continuity is throwing in a lot of really like out of left field characters right away and making them kind of prominent. So I'm enjoying it and I look forward to seeing where this all goes. It's been, it's been a blast. Now, if they could only figure out how to get the distribution so things come out in a more timely manner. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah. Also, if they're going to include all these characters, I want to see some toys of these characters showing up. <laughs> I want an, I want a Diatlas figure. Give me that. Give me a Straxus figure. Mm-hmm. Give me a new Hydra Dread and Rage. I want figures of all of these characters. It'll never happen. <laughs> All right. Well, those are Dr. Pants's thoughts on Transformers Escape number three. And that will do it for our review. And that was Transformers Escape number three. And we will move on to Transformers Media News. All right. I'm taking media news this time from Daryl. Ha <laughs> ha. You can't stop me. I don't think he's trying. It's my vacation. (laughs) (laughs) A couple of quick small things first in media news. Transformers Rescue Bots Academy was nominated for Best Animated Kids Series at the 2021 Irish Animation Awards. Uh, It's going up against a bunch of other shows. uh, Chico Bon Bon, Monkey with a Tool Belt. uh, Bally Braden. Dorg Van Dango. And boy, girl, dog, cat, mouse, cheese. Uh, all of what these the uh, shows. <laughs> <laughs> all of these shows are specifically uh, best uh, again best animated kids series, so over six years old. So, uh, you're we're probably competing here with a few few uh, shows for the younger crowd. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, these are is that, was that is that show for Trump? Boy, girl, dog, cat, mouse, cheese. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. <laughs> Look, Charles, I'm just fucking reading the goddamn type here. <laughs> Sorry, I, I did not look at the story ahead of time, and I was just I was caught off guard by these these show names. <laughs> Monkey with a tool belt. What the? Well, I, I guess the, it's a show about a monkey with a tool belt. The, the full title is Chico Bonbon Monkey with a Tool Belt. 
Uh, yes, li- very likely that these shows are uh, for the the much younger crowd. So that's probably why we got some weird names on it. Uh, but yes, so they, uh, it's been nominated for Best Animated Kids Series. So uh, good luck to them. And we hope you win because Rescue Bots is an excellent show and one of the longest running shows in Transformers history. So, yeah. Uh, second thing is actor Anthony Ramos says he is in for the next few Transformers movies uh, as the as one of the leads. Um, so this is this is kind of interesting news. He is he's gonna be he's essentially the next Shia LaBeouf and whoever uh, the the dude on on the last two whatever his name was Mark Marky Mark his name. Mark Wahlberg yes yeah that guy Marky Mark right. <laughs> Uh, so it looks like he's going to be uh, going to be the lead or one of the leads for the the next few. He's he's uh, he's the guy from Hamilton. He was uh, he was uh, Hamilton's best friend, John Lawrence. Oh, in the musical. Interesting. I saw that. I do. I'll have to maybe rewatch that and see it. See him again. So it seemed like he could he could sing. So cool. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's no singing in Transformers, but, you know, whatever. (laughs) Uh, He did an interview with the Fat Joe show where he uh, talks about that he uh, uh, the script that he read is uh, is crazy and that he's going to be starting uh, principal filming for it in just a couple of weeks. So let's uh, let's hope that it's. Well, I'll be honest, let's hope that it's good. Okay, that's all I'm going to (laughs) say. Let's hope that it's good. Okay. And the last thing we got in media news is some gaming news. So Renegade Game Studios has announced their Transformers deck building game. Uh, so this is this is some interesting news on here. And this is effectively why, uh, the thing that really caused uh, the cancellation of the Transformers trading card game. Because I can't imagine that Hasbro wanted... Uh, two competing card games on the market at the same time. Uh, unlike the trading card game, this is uh, effectively a living card game, like a living world card game, where you don't have to buy individual packs in order to get the the cards. So the the whole like collecting aspect of it that's out the window. Uh, you buy the 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 deck, you buy like the game, and it comes with all of the cards you need to. Uh, it depends on on the game itself, but generally these kind of games, like when you buy the base set, you have enough cards in there to form either uh, two or or more decks, so everyone who's who's who can play can play, or you start off with a a few cards kind of like in your hand, and you build up your deck over time with the the game mechanics. Uh, so this is going to be kind of interesting to to see because, like I said, this is going to be very uh, a very different feel than the 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 collectors uh, the the trading card game. Uh, it can be played competitively or cooperatively, and there will likely be some expansions coming out, uh, as as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, so. I'm actually gonna open up to uh, to you guys. Have any uh, of of I have any of you played a uh, kind of like a living card game, like a living world card game, like a like a Dominion or oh, what other ones? Like Marvel Marvel Champions, I think is another one. Have any of you guys played any of those? This is outside my experience. No, I have I have not had the chance to play something like this. No, you've played the the actual the the old trading card game though, right? Uh no, <laughs> I ha- I have the car I have some of the cards, but I have not actually had the opportunity to play a game with someone. So fair yeah. enough. Okay, uh, Dar- <laughs> Daryl, what about you? Have you had the chance to play any of the the like living card games I'm talking about? Uh, I played Magic: The Gathering. Okay, that's not really that's, the same thing. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> it, magic is exactly like the the, the Transformers one. <laughs> yeah. Um. Then no, no, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then fair enough. Um, but yeah, so the the basic mechanic of it, it in this is a little bit of conjecture because they haven't talked about like the rules or anything like that yet. 
but uh, generally you either build a deck to start with, with the cards available, and then play the, the decks against each other, or you have a mechanic which allows you to build up the deck over time, so you may start off with some lower powered cards kind of early on, and then over the turns you get one or two cards like every turn, and then you can build up, excuse me, the your deck and then fight it out. Uh, the idea that there's a co- uh, co-op version of this, though, that's kind of interesting because that's not something we've really seen a whole lot in the, uh, especially in the Transformers realm. So that'll be interesting to to see. Uh, are you guys into to picking this up? I, I am curious. I, I hope it's it's uh, it allows you to be Decepticons and Autobots. At least it looks from just the cover image, it looks like it's pretty Autobot focused, and then. That mega that shit eating grin Megatron in the background looks <laughs> <laughs> it's a little disturbing. Uh, the last line in this story here is, uh, "But the battle is far from over. As playable Decepticons are on the way to expand your game." So oh. it looks like, at least for the the core set here, you probably aren't going to have Decepticons in it. Well, boo. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> What about you, Daryl? You thinking of picking this up? I don't know. Similarly to Charles, I picked up uh, I picked up quite a few of the the Transformers trading card uh, game cards, and I only played a handful of games uh, with a few people. And after that, I mean, I wanted to get my daughter involved in it, and I was we were going to play, and then she just couldn't give a crap about it. And mm. and then at that point, I was you know I just I couldn't get motivated for myself, so there's a chance I'll take a look at it, but it's almost more cost prohibitive at this point, right? If I can get into it for 20 bucks or under, then there's a better chance, but if it's more expensive than that, then I'm probably out. I would estimate 20 to 30 for the, the price point for it. It's a, a one to four player game, and there there'll be enough cards in there to support four players at a time. So, I, I am thinking probably cl- a little bit closer to thirty. If it goes beyond that, I, I'd be surprised. I do see that the apparently Matt Frank is doing all the art on the uh, on the cards here, so that's interesting. I mean, he's he's a uh, IDW. He's done, you know, IDW work. He he's primarily a Godzilla artist or IDW Godzilla, but he has done IDW Transformers comics in the past. I mean, I think most notably he did um, that. Didn't he do the the Mars Attacks Transformers, and then he did the Spotlight Trail Cutter. Um, I believe so. So yeah, interesting to see uh, see him back doing tran- more Transformers work. Hmm. It looks like, at least from the from the box art, it looks like they're using the evergreen designs for the robots. Yeah, it does. I mean, the artwork, the box artwork does look good. So I got no problem with that. I'm definitely going to pick it up. Uh, and that's, part, well, aside from being it being Transformers, I do have game days at my place quite often. So I have a feeling I'll be able to get this to the table a lot more easily than... Uh, the trading card game. So, I'll definitely be picking it up. So, yeah. All right, well, that is it for uh, media news. All right, well, that will do it for this episode of Transmissions Alt Mode. Again, we want to end the show by giving a shout out to our masterpiece Donatrions. So thank you again to John 4 x Good and Dinobot Maximize for continuing to support the show at our highest level. You guys rock. And you can get some merchandise from our T Public store at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. That will help out the show uh, if you buy some shirts, some merchandise from masks. Uh, anything you buy will Give us a little bonus. Uh, if you buy anything from Tee Public through our link, that still helps out the show, even if you don't buy transmission swag. So please remember transmissionspodcast.com slash shop if you want to buy anything from Tee Public. And that's it, everyone. Thanks again for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, all. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. 
But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions Podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Well, might have to shift it a little bit then. Mike, are you still are you still good to edit this one? Oh fuck, that's right. I'm doing that, aren't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, Jeremy. I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, you left. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. Then I'm not talking to you then. Uh, if you guys want me to, I can take the the um the deck building game news if you want. I got opinions. You might as well just do all the media news then. <laughs> Before I say yes to that, what else is in media news? <laughs> cool. Well, peace out, boys. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last thing Daryl had to do. Do 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 do. Bump. Bump. Tink. <laughs> do, 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 do. And bump. <laughs> All right. All right, Daryl, talk about your, your uh, NFTs again. <laughs> <laughs> or we could just stop. <laughs>